Okay, so I've started the recording. Um, thank you guys for being with us today. Let me let in someone else. Today we are talking Lawmatics with Jordan Ostroff. And Jordan is like a two for one here deal um, because he not only is an attorney running a practice, he actually has a firm, which he'll tell you more about, that actually will help you build out Lawmatics. It's called, I believe, Legalese Marketing. Um, so they do marketing and they will actually help you build out your entire CRM with Lawmatic. So he's able to explain the techie side of it for you. Plus he can actually explain the practical use in his actual running firm. So take it away. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, so um, to echo what Regina said, so my wife and I opened a firm in 2015. Uh, I was had lived in Orlando for a while, had gone to UCF here, had gone to law school at Barry in Orlando. And so like, I kind of lucked into a number of cases knowing lawyers for 10 years. And then I was like, hey, it'd be great if I could market. So it wasn't just networking. Uh, and the next thing you know, I blew like 200 grand that I didn't have on bad marketing because I didn't understand a lot of this stuff. Part of it being a sales process in any way, shape or form. So when my wife told me that she was pregnant with our son, who's now three and a half, I realized we needed to change a bunch of stuff. And that became Lawmatics. So before that, I was used, I had created a like Frankenstein version of Zapier with Practice Panther, with Google Sheets, with Gmail, with MailChimp, with all these things. And like every two weeks, something would update on one of those programs, it would break everything. And so then finally, I got connected with the Lawmatics people. And I was like, oh my God, this is what I have been looking for. And this is what I sort of faked for a while. Um, and it, probably the single most important thing for turning my firm around and certainly probably the single most important thing we do for other firms because as you're tracking all these things you can see what marketing campaigns make sense and that could be google adwords that could be speaking engagements that could be having lunch with people like it will go through everything so i want to give you all an overview of lawmatics but also basically like what to look for in a crm because i think that's the next step for a lot of firms is how you can utilize that to increase your close rates, to increase your resales of clients, et cetera. Sorry, I got excited because Miriam has a Gryffindor cup. Is that what that is? <laughs> yes. I am like the Harry Potter like queen. I was like, oh, Gryffindor. I consider myself Ravenclaw though. Sorry. Off oh. <laughs> well, it's back on HBO Max. I've been binge watching it. <laughs> oh, I've owned them for years. And I, yeah, I, do watched, too. I, I just don't know where 20 I play. So. <laughs> 20 times and then they will never get old. Anyway. <laughs> so now I'm going to be obligated to put at least like three Harry Potter dad jokes into this presentation. <laughs> There's, you're, there never can be too many Harry Potter dad jokes. Ooh, fancy. All right. Well, this is the magic, right? Um, so this is the main page of Lawmatics. This is one of our dummy accounts. But ultimately, like one of the best things you get over here is that overall pipeline value and that overall conversion rate, which gives you an idea as of how much money to expect over whatever time frame. Um, and then obviously, if we built this out more, you could track the cost per client, cost per matter, total spend across all those things. I'll walk you through that in a little bit. Um, unfortunately, with this being a dummy account, it was way too much time for me to build out all of the tracking, but I'll show you what it looks like. So did this jump over? Yes, we see right. the pipelines. So the first thing I want to talk about is the pipeline. So stages. And most of the time we're talking about this for the purpose of intake. So we have a lead that didn't set a consult. They set their consult. They missed the consult. The fi they finished the consult. We sent them an agreement. We sent them an invoice. They hired. But you can also use this for every other part of your case. You can talk about, like I use Lawmatics for pre-suit PI. So I've got onboarding. I've got treatment phase, I've got requesting medical records, I've got demand letter going out, and then it finishes at suit filed, and then we move it over into practice Panther. Um, we've got this for closed cases. So the case is closed, the case has been closed for 90 days, and what we're doing in the first 90, the case has been closed for up to six months, and then after that, and there's all sorts of automations that back all these things. The benefit of the Kanban board, that's what you're looking at here, the stages, you can see where your problems lie. So from an intake standpoint, um, if you click on show all matters, it'll track all your ones that are that you've lost. So like if you have a bunch sitting in leads, that means you've got something wrong with your follow up. They're not booking a consult. If you have a bunch of people who whose case closes in the reschedule, they're not showing up for their consult or they're not um, rebooking the consult. If you're losing a lot of people in scheduled, you're getting a lot of consults booked on not viable leads. 
And so by going through that process, you can see where you have holes in your intake bucket and then doing the same thing for your cases, you can see where you're stuck. So if you've got, a, for the PI example, if you've got a bunch of clients waiting on demand letters, well, you've got some sort of process that's an issue there. Either you're not getting medical records, you're not writing the, the demand letters, you're not sending them out, whatever it is. And so I really like utilizing the Kanban board to see what you need to work on internally. So that might be new systems, that might be hiring a new person, it might be automation, but think about this for every part of your case. This is one for intake, but you can really utilize the same thing for the actual handling of your case. When cases are over, you can track referrals out here. So if you're sending a bunch of cases to other lawyers, you can put some different stages and see what's going on in there. And so when we build out Lawmatics, the biggest thing that I usually do is I have it come back to forms. So this is a customizable form that I made solely for the purpose of lawyer on the beach test. Um, and you can see, so the starred ones are required. So the last name, first name, put the addresses in here just so you can see how some of this looks, not required. The, the coolest part about this, I think though, is you can use conditional language. So for example, if it's in our area, yes, you can put your counties, it'll move on. But if it's not, then you can have instructions to whoever's fielding your calls. So let them know not our area, make a referral sheet, passing them, et cetera. And then you'll get that same functionality. Like if they go to here, we'll ask for, you know, different questions. If we go to family law, you know, we don't do that. So here's Regina's contact info, et cetera. And you can program all of these in the instructions for everything. And when you build that form out to be crazy, so this is our internal consult form for my firm. So it goes through all this. You can see similar stuff at the top. Um, we don't charge for consults on PI, we do on some cases, so that's here. More info on how they found us, the practice areas, and then as we go into personal injury, it's going to ask much different questions for this. We have different types, so car accidents, slip and falls, etc. If it's a criminal case, it'll change those questions. You've got all those things, and it'll also give you, um, you can give the same instructions and whatnot. And then, like, this is a case for us, yes. It's not a viable case. It's not for us. Refer it out. Then who to refer it to? And it'll change all these instructions over here. Um, the other thing being, oh, actually, sorry. This is the uh, attorney consult form. So this would have gone to the attorney beforehand, pre-filled with everything. You're not re-entering any data in Lawmatics ever, but you can override it. So um, notes from client if they submitted it online, intake form notes. So what our intake took. Uh, additional notes being if anybody else touched the file, and then what needs to be done after they hire. And then the cool part is you can do, and I have all these in here. So if it's a flat fee case, you have different questions for pricing. If it's hourly, you have different questions there. If it's contingency fee, there's different stuff. If it's an hourly retainer, there's different information and it'll run all of these and then it'll edit the contract. And I'll show you that off of this. So, so who's doing Virginia your beforehand. intake? Is you, Do you have that in-house or is an answering service doing your intake? So we use Smith for overflow. I've got an in-house, I've got one person who runs all of our intake in-house. The only thing the attorneys do would be the consult. And that's the form. It gets automatically emailed to them uh, an hour before the 24 hours, an hour and 10 minutes before the consult. So they can review it going in. Um, there can be file uploads and whatnot attached to it as well. And then they're submitting this, which then sends the contract and outlines all that. And then it goes back to my intake person to follow up. Okay. And we're a little bit smaller than we've been, but at my at my max, I was a 15 person firm. We still just had one person with intake because of Lawmatics. Like it probably saved me two staff members, or at least let me use two staff members in other ways that we would have otherwise needed, um, and increased our close rate. Right now, my firm closes about 55 percent of all of our leads, about 85 percent of all of our PI leads. So we still get some that are paid for. Uh, we still get some through ads for criminal and whatnot, and those are a little bit less uh, high of a close rate. And so no matter, I was going to say, with no matter what you do, you you have to kind of write the steps out ahead of time before trying to build it out. Otherwise, it's going to be a, it's going to be a hot mess, honestly, um, because every practice area is different, every firm is different. So I'm family law, so my process is going to be a thousand times different than a PI where you have to jump on those leads and you want to go from one pipeline to the next one very quickly. You want to go from them calling to them signing a retainer agreement, ideally the same day. I'm the opposite. I don't want to rush anything. Anyone that calls my office inpatient, 
in a divorce case, honestly, is not my ideal client. So I intentionally slow down the process. Um, so you just have to think about what's your ideal client, what practice area you have, and then write out the steps ahead of time. And then you take it to Lawmatix and say, based on my firm, this is what I want. Um, so for example, my intake form is shorter because I have a answering service doing an answering service is not going to do all of this. Um, they may do some some short intake stuff, but they're not going to go through like a really detailed script. So um, I have a shorter one for my intake. And the reason why that's important is I get like 30 calls a day and probably 20 of them I'm not interested in. And I can I can just kind of exclude based on that form alone. So that in and of itself has saved me so much time. Because I used to have a three-person intake firm, which honestly is crazy when I'm the only attorney in my firm <laughs> and I have three people handling intake. I was like, this is just out of whack because I'm not a large firm. It's just me. Um, so having a system like this where you can triage from the beginning and just send a whole bunch of texts like decline, 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 refer, refer, refer. I don't do this. You're you know, in butt crack County, Georgia, where I don't practice, whatever. Um, you just get rid of all those people and then it just funnels down to you know, the 10 calls that you're somewhat interested in. And then that's where you, you know, pay attention and do other follow-ups and other workflows and stuff. But it is amazing how much time you will save just having any kind of CRM, honestly. Yeah, we had a question. Um, once the client fills out the intake form, can you go back in the same form and make edits to add more information? The short answer is absolutely. The longer answer is your better way is you can actually, once you have the form lined up how you want, you can duplicate it a hundred times in the system. And so this is big like for estate planning. So a lot of our estate planning clients will do a free consult if they fill out a very long intake form. So that goes to the client. If they're not going to pay for the consultation, they fill it out. It goes to the attorney for pricing to edit it. It goes back to the client to review it after the consult to make sure it's correct. It goes to the onboarding team to make sure they're not missing anything as they go to schedule. And then it auto generates a lot of the documents. And so you can utilize these forms in a million different ways over and over again. The only thing in Lawmatics being if it's an internal form, you have to have a login. So in an internal form, you'll be able to look up contacts. So like for conflict checks, you can do that really easy on the internal ones. And you can also book immediately. If it's external, you lose those functionality, but you don't need them to have a login. So an external form you could host on your website. You know, if you want to have people book right there, you can set whatever rules for scheduling. Um, like what Regina said, you know, if you're looking to weed out some of the family law people, you can set them to auto book themselves, but they've got to wait a week. And, you know, that may weed out some of the things you can set them to only book with you Tuesdays from one to four. You can set them to, if they pay, they get whatever time, if it's free, they're limited. There's all sorts of rules that you can schedule into it because it's so customizable. Um, it's amazing. You're getting like 95% of Infusionsoft for like a third the price and a 10% of the aggravation. All right, so after the form, so those forms are then backed by um, automations. And so I'm just showing you a, sim a simple automation. So we have this, when their stages lead, they're gonna get an email and then this will show you, we can go, I'll show you some of the emails. They're gonna get an appointment request. Um, again, dummy account, if not a dummy account, I'd have text messages in here also. We just didn't get that set up for this account. The blues are delays, so you can delay it whatever timeline. And so the cool thing is like, if you have it set in stages, and you're losing a lot of people to that, you know, web lead, then go ahead and increase or lower some of your delays. So that way you're getting the people a little bit faster. If you find that, you know, you're getting, people aren't losing in that stage, but you're getting too many non-viable leads, then go and pull out the ability for them to auto book themselves and instead put some weeding questions to get better along those lines. And so really, I just love this from like that scientific method process of you're constantly tweaking some things to see how it impacts you're constantly changing and working on where you're getting stuck. The uh, two biggest things I want to share is this is how you should end every automation, in my opinion. A lot of people will move it to a different stage that they lost it. Don't do that because then you lose the ability to see those in the Kanban board. So I, I just have them lost and then I have a sub status. So if we've lost contact with them, they never set their consult. We lost contact after consult, whatever it's going to be. And then there's also some sub statuses if they give us feedback. Uh, price was too high, didn't have service offering, went with a competitor, whatever it is along those lines. So now I can run reports on why we're losing cases, what we're losing to, where we're losing cases. There's all sorts of cool things to do along those lines. And I normally set um, a task at the end to just review it one more time to see if there's something about this case. You know, maybe they told us they wanted to wait uh, three months for us to check back in. 
and the automation didn't hold that or something along those lines. And then one thing I'll mention is if you go back up to the beginning of your pipeline, if you could scroll back to the top. No, sorry, not the pipeline, the workflow. Yes, that. So to me, the most important is the first one. So um, what I do is when you get a lead, everybody gets the same automatic text message. And that text message is so important because, you know, if you don't want people to fall through the cracks, because I don't take any calls live. So all my people are told, you know, you'll get a call back at some point today or tomorrow. Um, you know, sometimes people will fall through the cracks. And some of that is intentional because I don't want people who are too impatient. But any of it, the first text should be something that gives them a whole lot of information. And mine does. It's, you know, thank you so much for contacting my firm. As you know, we're one of the few firms in Georgia that offers flat fees for family, for family law and divorce, which is a huge differentiator. So honestly, that in and of itself is going to make people wait a little bit to call me back because it's not like they can just call the next flat fee attorney on the list because there's like three of us and <laughs> one sucks. <laughs> so two of us are really good and then you got the other. Um, and you can give them information about what the next steps are. Please expect a call from Krista within a couple of hours. If we're not able to take your case, this is what will happen. We'll send you a text, we'll send you an email. Nobody reads emails, by the way. And I used to use Dibsado. I was a really big proponent of Dibsado, but they just don't have automatic texting. They have, you know, you have a weird workaround where you can email the text, but who the hell wants to do all that? So texting, I would was not sold on for a while. It is, it is a game changer too. Um, people are are reviewing text messages, um, and it goes into the system and not directly to your phone or anything, so don't worry about that. But it's an opportunity to market. So you can put links to anything that you want. Um, here's a video about divorce. Here's a video about how to work with our firm. So from that very first moment, they're getting a response from your firm that makes them feel like they're already invested or a client. And my favorite thing to do is to give them homework, <laughs> honestly, to see if they're serious. Like, here are some things that we would need you to do. Um, and they do it. So we send a link in the initial text that says, upload your document. So I can review if there's a case in progress or, you know, whatever. It just kind of helps me give more context. So that first, you know, message to them should be packed with information. Um, that's just my opinion. So. <clears throat> And you can also use the delays to use that to your advantage. So if you want that to be obviously automated, you can send it immediately. But if you want them to think that somebody looked at their case and sent some follow-up information, you can delay it seven minutes, 11 minutes, 36 minutes, whatever it is along those lines. Uh, we also got a great question. So once a person's going through an automation, can you stop them from regressing further? Absolutely. So I do mine, most of my automations, I do stage-based. So stage is lead that will start this automation. And then all the way at the bottom, I get my exit conditions. So stage being not, uh, not lead. And had I have done this with a little bit more time, I would also have included and um, status is not PNC. So if I move them to another stage, they'll be out of this stage. It'll kill this automation. If I move them to lost, it'll kill this automation as well. That's probably the most overlooked feature in CRMs. If you don't have entry conditions and exit conditions, you do not have a scalable CRM. If you have to manually drag people or tell the system it needs to now do something else, you do not have scalability. And at the point that you're doing 50 or 100 leads a month, um, I've had firms using Clio Grow or some similar to that that had an entire person whose sole job 40 hours a week was clicking the button to move things to another stage or stopping automations. I'll show you a simple but crucial feature of PDF Element, which will make it so easy to delete a specific page or range of pages. Uh, PDF sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Could be a lot worse. And a, at least it's not an embarrassing video. Oh yeah, that, that would suck. <laughs> there was a pop-up window. I don't know why it popped up, but anyway. I got to finish the process. Yeah, is it still going? I got a uh, yeah, I've got Holly Schmick. I think it's on hers. Oh, okay. So right now. Anyway, to totally fine. It's not a, it's not violent or pornographic. So <laughs> could be, could have been a way worse spot pop up. So those are the stages. That's the biggest thing is if you don't have entry and exit conditions, you are going to spend so much more time manually doing this to get all these automations. Whereas this is running itself. Um, I can't tell you the last time I had to manually drag a lead in Lawmatics because it's doing it itself based upon the forms being submitted, based upon the person hitting the end of the automation, based upon them booking a consultation, whatever it is. And that's what gives you the scalability that you're not manually in this making all these changes. So for those emails, you can go relatively simple. 
Um, those emails will work off of templates. So you build a nice template with the top and the bottom. This is an older one. And then you can also go really crazy with it. So this is one of our newsletters. So we had a graphic designer put this together for us going in and all of this is editable, just like it was in Microsoft Word. You go in and retype over here for the videos. You just change the URL. It'll upload a new video. It'll pull a thumbnail, et cetera. Um, you've got you know HTML or graphics that you can put in here to change and whatnot. You can load photos and you've got all the different rows. So you can do, I think of one to five in a bunch of different formats. And then you drag the different content into there, buttons, dividers, video, HTML, text, et cetera. And you can get a ton of things in here. I am by no means suggesting you make all them this long. Uh, this was way too long of a newsletter. We did not get the open rates we wanted. We've cut our newsletter down, but I'm showing you the breadth of options in here. And then you can send it as tests if you want to check it. Otherwise, it'll go out automatically depending upon whatever instructions you have put in for it. And you can get really granular. Oh gosh, I don't know why I tried that word today. Granular with the workflows, and because you have those conditional um, questions. So if they're calling about a PI case, the response that they get can be specific to PI and have a video about how your, you know, how your case handles, you know, motorcycle accidents. If they're calling about something different. They can get a response and a video that's about a different area of law. So you can make it pretty specific because honestly, people only care about themselves. So they don't want to know how you handle a motorcycle accident case when they're calling about a will. So um, the more specific you can get with your targeted automatic responses, the better, because they want to see themselves, you know, in your firm, because the best way to market is, I've done this case before, and we kicked ass doing it, frankly, <laughs> like, that's what they want to see. And that's why, like, if you saw on our intake form, so if we were in personal injury, we've got these, so now I'm running different, so the one pushback I have, I do think people like reading reviews from other clients, but about their kind of case. So we have a drip for car accidents to talk about how great we were on car accident cases. We have a drip for slip and falls. Somebody wrote about, we like did a really serious investigation into the location, whatever it was along those lines. So I'm utilizing that stuff to automate completely different emails to everybody. And I get the benefit of, I can look at open rates. I can look at bounce rates. I can look at read rates in the emails. I can look at people clicked on something in the email. So if we embed a video, I can see how many people clicked on it. And so the more that we see, those numbers going up exactly what Regina said. They're going up when it's more hyper-targeted to them. And I'm doing that all without really taking any extra time other than the, you know, five seconds to pick the sub subtype of case. Right. So those can be built into the workflow too. So my workflow initially was you get the, the initial response saying, if we can help you, then we'll give you a call back. After we get the call back, they'd automatically get a follow-up call. This is what we talked about. And they would either go to the funnel of, you know, here's the fee agreement, or if they didn't set a consultation, then they would just go into a different funnel where I think a day later, we send another email that's just, and this is automatic, specific about their particular area of law that they were interested in with the video. And then I think one of the final ones was a review one. So they would get another follow-up text and email saying, you know, here's some reviews about, you know, Edwards Family Law. I cut my workflow off then just because I have a whole bunch of calls and I don't see that I'm not chasing, you know, leads. Um, but if you're not getting 30 calls a day, then you really want to nurture those leads. And I don't remember what the conventional wisdom is like eight, 10 touches, something like that, that you really kind of have to just keep sort of, um, you know, sending messages and eventually those will convert. I just do it a little bit differently because I have a high number of calls and also because I'm family law and I honestly just feel weird about it <laughs> because someone calls about a divorce, sometimes people change their mind. It's not like probate where you're going to die at some point. So you, you need an estate plan from someone, um, but you don't necessarily need a divorce. I just kind of feel weird like a month later kind of saying, hey, you still want that divorce? Um, so that's why I cut off my drip campaigns. But if you're in a different area of law where you don't have that concern, um, then yeah, go for it just keep bombarding people. <laughs> some yeah, I always look at it as, are you in a proactive area of law or reactive? So right. personal injury, criminal defense, reactive, right. um, estate planning, adoption, that side of stuff being proactive. Family law is the toughest one because you've got both depending upon if they were served or if they're thinking about it or if the kid got you know taken by the other spouse and, and removed. Um, and so we, for a lot of the estate planning firms, I mean, we put together a 24 month email drip campaign so two years explaining the benefit of an estate plan and sharing stories of, you know, 
all the famous people that die without a will when they're worth $500 million, which makes no sense to me, but so be it. Attorneys will get rich off of those things. Um, and then obviously, again, to go back in Lawmatics, and then you can track the click-through rates on those emails to see, you know, okay, at the six-month to eight-month mark, that's when people are booking that console. That's when they're coming back to get it done. So maybe we don't need the ones after that, but at least, you know, we've got them here. And obviously you've got the promotional ability up here. So any of these will allow them the chance to unsubscribe. So if you do that long-term nurture, please make it promotional. They can, they can remove themselves from it. Our newsletter, I mean, I've had 15,000 people remove themselves from our newsletter. We still get, you know, 20, 30,000 people that it goes out to. So, um, and we get cases from it. I got the last newsletter that went out. We did get a case from like within 24 hours. So, all right, so this is a contract. Um, I should have done this a little bit differently, but like it, these are all conditional fields. So it's running, you know, if we have the, uh, if we have a case name already, it'll pull this one. If we have a case number already, it'll pull this one. If we just have the county in case, it'll pull this one, whatever it is along those lines. And then all the payment stuff. So if you've got a subscription-based um, business law type thing, we've got all that lined up in here. If you've got hourly fees all going in here and those all go back to these being those conditional fields from that contract to fill in all those things. If it's retainer, if it's flat fee, if it's payment plan, if it's contingency. And so you'll see like it changes because uh, my expenses for contingency fee read differently. So you've got all these in one contract. So now if we move our office address um, I guess I have to go in and uh, it's not even on here. If we change our phone number, I'd have to go in and edit it on all of these, but I only have to edit it once. I'm not going into 14 different contracts to go through and swap those out. And, and so you get all of that PI, stuff. With PI, getting a contract out immediately and getting them to sign is super, super, super important because if you don't take the call, they're just going to hang up and call someone else. They're not, it's just a totally different area of the law. So having an automated, okay, they're calling about a car accident. And you, you get the contract out, you can get it out, you know, automatically. And it's electronic sign where they just click on their phone and sign. They can become a client, you know, within 30 seconds of you talking to them on the phone. And Lawmatics will text message that. So your clients can sign it with their phone. Highly, highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. It's great. Um, and then also we do credit card authorization. So if you're doing anything with the payment plan or whatnot, this will go on there. Uh, that's my suggestion. As long as you can do it ethically in your state. All right. People so then read emails, which drives me, drove me crazy. And, you know, I was getting so many calls from people saying, I called your office and we didn't hear back from you. And I would go and look, no, we sent you an email. We sent you an email. Well, they don't read it. So that's where I finally realized I'm going to have to get on board with texting. And it, it, it literally changed my, <laughs> my monthly revenue tripled the first month I started using my CRM with texting. And it did not require a lot of time. And I even got like two five-star Google reviews out of me declining a case. <laughs> and it was an automatic decline saying, I'm so sorry, I can't take your case because you're in this county. Here are some resources. And they're like, oh, this is awesome. Thank you so much for the information. Texting is everything. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. Um, and then with in Lawmatics, I think it's $20 a month to add two-way texting so they can reply. Um, then you send it internally. It can be on the task. It can be through emails. And then you can have people reply to the message and it gets texted back to the client. So you can get whole conversations in there. Um, there's a bunch of task functionality. The thing I like about this is that you can pull everybody's information. So upcoming past due all, or completed tasks, but also I can look at them by everybody on the team or everybody who has a Lawmatics account in whatever time range, in whatever priority level, and then sort it in whichever way I wanna go to. And we put a ton of stuff in here. So in addition to the tasks, in addition to the texts and emails, we've got tasks to follow up with people uh, before they hire, after they hire, after their case is closed. We're putting in tasks for us to up, get updated medical records for them while they're in the treatment phase. There's all sorts of things that we have in here. And all of those are set up automatically in those automations that you saw. So as long as they're in the treatment phase, we're going to check every 30 days for new medical records for them. And I think I run that for like 18 months, which no one's in the treatment phase that long, but we have it in there um, just in case. And then once they move over to the next one, it kills that automation. It stops making those tasks. You can also trigger people to move based upon tasks being completed. So once demand letter is sent or once we need to send out the demand letter, there's a task. 
demand letter written, reviewed by attorney and mailed out. Once the mailed out task is completed, that moves them out of that pipeline into the next one. So I've got a bunch of follow-ups with the staff member, with the attorney, and then with myself. Why is this demand letter still sitting? If it gets sent out, it's not in there. Those tasks never run. We're good to go. And you do that with everything. Um, the one that I've liked recently that I've seen a ton off is estate planning. So once you do the signing meeting, you get a whole new pipeline. They schedule the signing. They do all that. And then they've got to fund the trust. So now we've got like six months of reminders. Hey, did you go to bank X? Did you get this done in, in a fidelity and UBS and this financial advisor, whatever it is. And all that stuff is automatically entered in on their intake form. So all those emails are triggering with the right information immediately. And then once the staff member approves, they get a form that says, did they fund fully? Yes. It moves them out and those tasks go away. All right, so the next thing, and I did not build this out as much as I should have, but you've got marketing settings in here. So you can run all sorts of different sources. So the source being the big overall one. So native to the systems referrals, I added presentations. So that might be um, social media or that might be Facebook as the large one. That might be Google My Business. That might be um, direct mail. And then you've got individual campaigns under here. So if you're doing AdWords as a source, you, you'll have add A as a campaign, add B, add C, add D. And so what we do for our clients is add A goes to landing page A, goes to contact form A, comes into the system, and now it's automatically tracked in here. And I can see the coolest thing. One of the coolest things about Lawmatics here is I can see total and hired. So when we are running four different ad sets for a client, I don't care how many people booked a consult, I really care how many of those hired. And so we'll look at like if this ad got them 30 consultations and three people hired and this ad only got them 10 consults, but nine of those hired, we probably want to put more money in that other ad, even though it would normally look like it did worse because it got fewer consults. But because I'm using Lawmatics or a good CRM, I can see that it goes into the amount that hired and see what's the best value. And then I can click right here and put in costs. And you can set this up to repeat to run all the ROI. You can do referrals and literally you could track in the costs. Went to lunch, lunch costs 50 bucks and type all that in. You can get as granular as you want with it and it'll give you all the reporting in here and it'll do the same thing for referrals and how many they sent and also how many of those hired. And you can do that for social media. You can track individual posts. You can use what's called UTM codes. So you basically go into Google, you have them generate a UTM code. So it's stuff at the end of the URL up here. And it'll say, hey, Facebook post on 9-7. That's where those people click to get to the website. That's how they got over here. That's how they booked this form, whatever it is along those lines. You can get so, so in the weeds with this stuff. But if you really want to see what's working, the more information you put in here, the easier it is for you to see what works. And that could be different um, social media platforms, that can be different ad sets, that can be different referral sources, that can be the difference between all those things, et cetera. You can go really deep in here. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is the reporting. So I run a number of reports for my firm every month. I can't show you those because they have client information and I couldn't really figure out an easy way to weed it out. But ultimately you can set a report for anything so we ask for hobbies for referral sources. So I could literally run a report that just gives me my referral sources by hobby for the ones that like the magic versus, you know, I get, I get season tickets to the Orlando magic. So I've got ones that like the Lakers, that like the heat, that like the Timberwolves. And I can look at what referral sources are most going to be interested in tickets when that team's in town or whatnot along those lines. You can get super in-depth with these reports. Um, I always suggest you want to run leads and then you look at the different areas, you want to run hired clients, you look at the different sources and campaigns. The other thing is I have all my cases. When the case is over, there's another form that we run that includes the amount that we were paid for it, how long we had the case, and how long since the accident. So now I can run reports to track my average case value, but also my average case time for PI. And so if hypothetically there was some sort of you know nationwide pandemic, that closed down our courthouse. I don't know if anybody's familiar with COVID at this point. I'm assuming everybody's heard it. I'm sorry, that's probably bad humor. Um, but we were able to see like, look, normally our cases close in six and a half months on average. So I projected, you know, whatever it was, hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash flow. Well, now COVID hits and those same cases now take 15 months. 
So I can go back in and I can run all of my cases from six months ago, eight months ago, 12 months ago to see where we're at to then do cash flow projections with the updated information of the impact COVID has had on us. Um, and you can run those. These are all going to be in real time. So they're going to update and you can add the different filters. So if I only wanted to see people whose last name uh, is not equal to, you know, whatever, Ostrov, then I could add that filter and it would filter all those people out. So if you're looking for a specific answer, you know, again, like the hobbies one, you know, I'm looking for people that are interested in the Lakers. I'm looking for people that moved here from Minnesota. I'm looking for whatever data points you're collecting, you can run all sorts of crazy reports. But the biggest thing I have for anybody doing contingency, please track time as well. That's a big thing. And then filling out that form with that final payment information will also then run them into, I'm texting them a review to leave a Google review. We've got, I don't know, 130, 140 reviews because we're sending people that straight from that Google My Business link. It also triggers us to follow up. So 30 days later, we're checking with them you know, did you get everything? Do you need a connection with a financial advisor? Six months later, how's everything going for you? Are there any issues coming up? You know, are you back to being 100%? Are you back to work? Whatever it is. And we'll run those for, I want to say five years. Some of that check-ins automatically, some of it's manual, because unfortunately, statistically, you're more likely to get into a second accident if you're in a first one. And so we want to stay in touch with our clients for an altruistic standpoint, but also from a business standpoint to make sure that they're doing well and getting the help that they need once their case is closed, especially for anybody that's going to have continuing long-term impact for this uh, TBI, traumatic brain injuries, you know, anybody going through physical therapy that goes after the extent of their case, we've got some notes in there. So when we're checking in with them, we're checking in on exactly what's going on for them. And then you've got all that stuff would show up here. If I was in a real account, daily new matters, new clients, whatever. And then also you get close rates and percentage-wise conversion rates, so up to 100%. So not just number. And this reflects what we had here. So you see presentations and referrals. That's going to reflect everything you enter here. As you do it, it'll have those come up in that main page. So hired, PNC, and lost. Excuse me. And also do the overall conversion rates on it. So percentages. So you can see that you, know, you should be closing 80% of your referrals. You should be closing... 30% 20 to 30% of your internet leads you should be closing you know 50% of people that went to a webinar whatever whatever your percentages are you can track those and you can do today month year etc um, and then you can also go in and do manual time customized timelines through the reporting I have a question so the the form Button is this like a full document generation system that you can create any forms that you want based on the intake forms and the information that was inputted? For the short answer, yes. So let me see. Um, so custom forms. Sorry, I got to drag the uh, thing over here. So you can go in and edit, and you're just drag and dropping in the forms. So whatever my custom fields are over here. You just drag it over into there and you could do up to three across on the forms, click to delete. And then when you click on them, you can get the required and also you can get conditional logic. So based upon whatever other fields I had in there, it'll run those. And then you can run different automations off of that same conditional logic. So example, if they miss their initial consultation, then we move them into that stage. If they made it, we're not going to move them into the Miss consult stage, we're not going to follow up with it. Did that answer your question? Yes. Um, right. Also, people are super, super big into integrations. I'm less so because I kind of like to have different systems. But anyway, <laughs> um, so you mentioned Practice Panther. So which systems do you have an integration with and, and basically kind of explain that process to get you know, information from one to the other? Sure. So natively in Lawmatics, they've got Zoom. Zoom is based upon integrated by account. So everything else is integrated by firm, but ultimately everybody might have their own Zoom account. So it's an integration. So my integration, that's based upon account. Um, and you can set this up with Zoom. So it'll automatically send Zoom links when you, when you book virtual consults for other programs. So Smokeball, Clio, Filevine, Rocket Matter, Practice Panther, 
being your integrations with the traditional case management systems, and then law pay for payments, wealth council for document drafting, ring central for phone calls, and call rail for the tracking. Um, also though, Lawmatics is on the Zapier platform. So anything that integrates with Zapier, there'll be integrations with Lawmatics. It just depends upon what triggers you need, where you're looking for the information. Like the one, the biggest thing here is their Lawmatics will sync out, but it's not gonna sync back as much. So I have some people do like on Zapier that if they book a follow-up call through the case management system, it'll put that information back in Lawmatics or some firms are so indebted to Acuity or Calendly. So we have that zap the matter into Lawmatics based upon the schedule platform. Um, at this point, I don't know what functionality people are missing because Lawmatics has done a great job adding a bunch of that stuff as we've asked for it. I know for a while it was difficult to get paid for consults or it's difficult to get some of the uploads a specific way. So that's why people were using it, but it is there on the Zapier platform for anything else that isn't native here. Um, and honestly, for a number of these, like Clio, like Lawmatics integrates into Clio Manage, I think better than Clio Grow does, even though Clio owns Clio Grow, but really it's it's um, Lexicata that got reskinned. So there's a couple of these where I think Lawmatics does a better job integrating into the other program than like Filevine bought Lead Docket. I still think Lawmatics goes into Filevine better. Maybe they'll change that. They haven't had it as long. I don't know, but you get that opportunity. And so right now, the biggest thing that Lawmatics is missing that you would need out of a case management system, hourly billing and invoicing. Um, I'm pretty sure that's coming down the pipe relatively soon. There has been some features added that make it seem like that's the case. That's about the only thing. The document generation, um, there's some, like you can't necessarily start a new document on a page break. So if you're doing estate planning and you've got like 30 different documents that have to go out and they have to be on new pages, that might be a little complicated in Lawmatics. What we've done for clients though, is they brought in a VA in another country. We organize everything to them. The VA merges it all into Adobe and sends it back. So that takes, you know, 10 minutes to get that lined up. And then they're not paying whatever it is per month for a, a totally different document drafting or having to worry about training somebody in 17 different systems. So, you know, I'm a big fan of, especially anybody looking to grow your firm, the fewer softwares you have, the easier it is to grow your firm because you don't have to train somebody on 19 different programs. So, I feel attacked. Well, what? <laughs> I feel attacked. Because <laughs> that's pretty much exactly what I have. I have way too many programs. Oh, well, <laughs> but you, you've got, you, you have limited yourself staffing wise by your choice. Yeah, so it's a little yeah. bit different of a situation. Yeah. You know, if you were looking to be a 15 attorney firm tomorrow, then you'd probably benefit from removing some of those. But based upon you turning down the majority of your leads, it's not the same time calculus for you. So I have a question regarding exporting stuff. So is there a way to build into your pipeline like that when a client signs a fee agreement in here or otherwise you tag them as a client, they automatically export to your practice management system and then they become a client there. Yep, so I normally do it off of the hired tab. So that will convert them from a PNC to hired status wise, that will sync them over. I also will run an email. So if you remember, excuse me, let me go back. So if you remember in my attorney consult form, I have the, this needs to be done as soon as possible. So based upon the type of case, I'm sending an email to the paralegal taking the case over with the information in here that says like, hey, ASAP, I need you to uh, request this um, traffic cam footage. I need you to send this notice to the restaurant to preserve their records or their video or whatever it is. So I've got those lined up automatically upon that hired stage. And we're pushing the client in the console like, hey, look, I need you to hire because you need this. And normally those things override in 30 days. Or, you know, for criminal law, you got to request a hearing for a DUI in 14 days. So, and I've got a lot of those things automated into a lot of their follow-ups based upon the information for type of case or whatever it is along those lines, as we're talking about the benefits of hiring an attorney or the way that it's better if we work faster, um, things like that. Is there also a way to export, for example, all of the contacts just in one like XLS file? So settings, yeah. export, you can do it here. Um, it's not perfect unless, like if you import, I guess the export's a lot better. If for importing, 
you have to have these things lined up. And so like certain case management systems do not import well into Lawmatics, but you can export that CSV from Lawmatics really easily. And so it just depends upon if you're matching the right headers and the organization in that uh, spreadsheet. All right. So I personally like just to keep all of my systems separate. Like I like my intake to be separate from practice management, be big separate from anything else, because if I want to quote unquote fire a particular service, it's a lot easier to switch them out. But um, that being said, I don't think there's a reason to have all of your potential clients crammed into Clio or Smokeball or Practice Panther or whatever you're using. So if you want to run a conflict check, to me, it just makes sense just to use your CRM as a conflict check and only put your clients into the practice management system. Otherwise, it's just going to get clogged with hundreds of people that you'll never hear from in your life. And because it's it's exportable, if for some reason Lawmatic just blows up or, or you want to use something else, you can easily export all of the contacts and then that could be easily imported somewhere else or be checked elsewhere. So I don't ever think that you should clog a practice management system with every single call that comes into your office. I think you, that CRM should be dedicated to intake. That's just my personal take on it. So. Yeah, I mean, it. it, it I 100% agree with you. The only thing would be there are certain things that I think are a lot easier to do with clients in the CRM. Like you've got basically MailChimp in here. You've got all the emails and stuff. So if you're doing um, newsletters and you need a specific info piece of information to go to all of your current clients, like for family law in Florida, a couple of years ago, they changed the way that taxes work on alimony. So that would have been something really good to run through your CRM, even if you only wanted to target your current clients. And remember, because once they hit this stage, they get added to hired versus PNC. I can create an audience just on people that hired me to send that information. So I can do a lot of the client update targeting or the follow-ups a lot easier in my CRM than my case management system, even if I want to limit it just to hired clients. I have a question. Is that okay to ask? I don't know, I haven't heard the question yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm a true solo for right now. I mean, hopefully I'll expand one day. Uh, but for that reason, I'm really big on automations. I'm trying to cut my manual work as much as possible. And I have signed up for Lamotics and Locus and a few others. <laughs> I'm trying them all out. Uh, so there's an automation that I built in Locus that I absolutely love. Like I love the flow of that, but I came to a stop because I realized there was something that I couldn't do with it to move my leads further. So um, what I ideally, what I want to do is have like a short intake form, something like Regina does very short where I'm not taking too much information up front, but I do have a couple of key questions in there that I'm asking, like, for example, does this lead intend to potentially retain an attorney at some point to resolve this issue? If they say yes, then they'll progress. If they say no, they, you know, they have no intention of hiring, then I don't want to waste my time with them. I'll just send them an email, be like, I'll review this. And if you have a question, I'll get back to you when I can essentially. But the one that progresses, and then um, I want to have like another conditional uh, field in that original form where it asks them like what's the main area of practice that they're interested in or they have a question on. And then it lists the things that I do like trademark, copyright and contracts. Again, depending on which option they choose, they'll progress that way. But now um, let's say somebody picked trademarks and they go down, I send them a SMS, you know, like, hey, uh, you're going to get an intake form in an email or even in an SMS, I can deliver the link. But where I'm coming at a stop on Locus, and I'm wondering if Lawmatics can resolve this, when I send that thorough intake form to them within that same automation that I built based on a practice interest, let's say my trademark intake form is a long, thorough form that has a lot of information that I need to figure out what's going on with this. I need that information to update the lead or the PNC that was already created from the first short contact form that they filled out. Yep. The short intake form. In Lawmatics, I have no way of updating that lead information. A contact will fill out that second form, that, but that information will just sit somewhere in a platform uh, for the form responses, but it will not automatically go towards updating that uh, original lead that was created. Is this something that's doable? 
Yep. In you mathematics. honestly, I don't even know how you made it so it didn't. Um, there's a couple options. Either one, you're not merging email address matches into it, or you're not sending it through the already existing matter. Because once that, or, or maybe that first one just creates a contact and not a matter. I'm not sure. Yeah, but. it does not create matter. I this is the lead stage where um you know I go through my leads uh, to the point where they have to schedule a consultation with them, and this is not possible. I confirmed this with their team. I had uh, a demo with them trying to figure out a workaround. This is not possible currently with them. Like they do not update the lead that was already created through another form. Uh, I the only workaround that I can do is create custom fields again like a custom field for the client's name custom field for the client's email to link back to the custom fields so that it will update them that way but i'm essentially gonna end up with a mess of a contact with like name yeah. custom name field but that's not ideal I mean, we're, <laughs> yeah. i'm doing like four or five different forms with the same client so it may be because you're not creating a matter off that first form that's what's giving you the trouble but i mean if they're a lead they're a matter for you to track whether or not they hire Otherwise, you're kind of doctoring your numbers. You're doing this in Locus or Lawmatics? Oh, sorry, in Lawmatics. You're talking about Locus. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like okay. I created this in Locus and I realized I could not update gotcha. the lead. So I'm wondering if I can do that in Lawmatics. Yeah, sorry. I thought you were saying Lawmatics. So, yes, I don't even know how you'd be able to do it the way that you did it in Locus in Lawmatics because it will merge that. That's the whole point of it. Right. But what I've seen with Locus is when you get to your workflow stage, you can pretty much just print it. So you can just send a PDF and say, hey, this is what I've done so far in Locus. This is what I want to do in Lawmatics. Fix it. <laughs> pretty much. No, no. I already placed that feature request with them. But, uh, you know, because I'm a true solo right now, I essentially I would have to go back manually. Um, like read the information that they filled out off of that form and type that in and manually update. But I'm trying to cut that manual process as much as possible. When yeah. I hire somebody, that person can be responsible for that. But for now, it's not ideal. So here's my stance. I, I am an Apple junkie for like the phone. Um, Locus is like the Apple and Lawmatics is like the Google that Locus is like trying to add features six months later, a year later to catch up versus Lawmatics having them like immediately already and having vetted out a lot of the, the bugs and whatnot. Um, I do think those are the two companies that have the best customer support, unlike some of the larger companies that don't seem to care about our input in any way, shape or form. But I just, I feel like Law, Lawkiss started out as a case management system and they're adding on the CRM capabilities. Lawmatics started out as a CRM. The, the founder of Lawmatics started my case. So he intentionally made it initially not to be a case management system. However, I think they've realized that we love it so much from the automation standpoint for exactly what you're talking about as the true solo saving all that time. So I think they're going to, they're adding more and more of those case management functionalities, but it is truly a CRM. Whereas Locus is a case management system trying to add the CRM marketing integration. Um, I like, I know they just added the exit conditions, which is humongous or entry conditions, and they don't have exit conditions yet. So there are those features, I think, coming down the pipe there, but those are things that have been in Lawmatics for years. One being exactly your question. Like it, you, you'd have more difficulty not updating the information for a client going through multiple forms in Lawmatics. It would, that's the native purpose of Lawmatics to keep that same information all connected. I mean, that's what a CRM really is you're trying to compile all of your knowledge base in one spot. So if you're having those forms get filled out by the client, by a paralegal, by you, the attorney, by the client's spouse, whatever it is, Lawmatics is going to keep all that stuff together under their matter in the way that you need it. Thank you so much. And yeah. short, another short question. <laughs> sure. As far as payments are concerned, when you take payments, do you take it through Lawmatics or do you prefer to take it through the practice management software? So that depends. Um, in terms of intake, I integrate it with LawPay. I send the stuff with LawPay. It's all set up through LawPay. They can do the credit card. They can do e-check follow-up after that. Um, if you're doing hourly billing, if you're doing bi-weekly payments, 
you're probably better off using that in a case management system. If it's like a payment plan, you can get that set up relatively easily. But if you're variable amounts, you're going to be better off either in law pay directly or in your case management system. That's again, the one feature I, th I think keeping Lawmatics from being a full case management system. And if you're not, so if you're not hourly, like if you're PI, you know, we don't need it. I just, I, I've stayed in practice Panther for the, because my, I don't know, five people in personal injury don't want to move over and I don't do any of the work. So I've deferred to them that they can keep that program at that one last phase. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Happy to help. Like I truly, I, I def can definitively tell you Lawmatics has been the program that has had the biggest change on me going from working 70 hours a week to working 25 hours and three days a week. So, and now I don't do any legal work like at all. So it's been great. And a lot of that has to go with this because as you create new systems and processes, you're actually physically getting Lawmatics to force somebody to follow that system or automate that process or whatever it looks like. So you've got like a business consulting side of this. You've got like that Tetra policy and procedure side, plus it's getting done, plus it's getting tracked, plus it's happening as quickly as you want it to. I mean, it's just, it's an incredibly robust program that does start out a little bit overwhelming because it's got all of the customization in it. But once you get stuff in there, it's really easy to make tweaks and changes and add stuff and see what else your clients need to see what else makes sense from a marketing standpoint to track, you know, whatever new lead sources you've got or whatever new campaigns you put together. So yeah, that's a nice segue into the other thing that Jordan does, which is he builds this crap out. So I happen to be a super, super nerd. Like I totally will own that. I love building this stuff out. Like it literally gives me joy. <laughs> like when someone just comes up with a new, um, hey, have you heard of this system? I love the demo systems. I like to build them out. That's just me because that's me. If that's not you, then you need to throw money at the problem, hire someone else to do it. So if you don't actually enjoy it or it takes you a lot of time or you find yourself getting frustrated and then just kind of giving up on the whole process, then it's really worth your time to just pay someone to just get it all up and running for you. Because once it's up and running for you, it will literally change your life. Yeah, and thank you, thank you so much for that um, segue. And the other thing, so again, I go back to like, we look at ourselves more as fractional CMOs than marketing vendors. So it's not necessarily like we need to do all this for you. So some of our clients know what they need process-wise, but aren't great writers, or they've written a, a, the, the workflow, they've written the emails out, but they don't know how it makes sense, or they don't know when they should follow up, or you know how often they should follow up, or what else clients need to care about. And so I always tell like, there's that little bit of business consulting that we do in our work to make sure that the stuff makes sense. And the beauty of in Lawmatics is you're tracking all of it in real time. So like literally we can prove our value to you over and over again, based upon your close rates, based upon tracking all the marketing campaigns, based upon open rates and emails, based upon increasing the hiring rate, whatever it is. And, you know, it's not that marketing company uh, hidden numbers reporting that you get that makes no sense because you're in Lawmatics also. Any other questions? So, hi, I'm asking, how do we get set up with you or with anyone for that matter to help us set up these systems? I mean, as solos, I'm a solo as well. And as being a solo, trying to make time to think through all of this, what does the process look like for working with someone with you, like you and your business? So for us, um, you can book. So right now I'm doing all the sales calls. So I do prospecting and sales for us and then that's it. So if you go to legalesemarketing.com, um, you've got, you can book a consultation with me right there. If you shoot me an email, jordan at legalesemarketing.com, I'll send you the booking link. Uh, we actually do all of our stuff through Lawmatics. So everything you see for my intake, we can recreate for you in Lawmatics. Uh, once you sign up, we book you for onboarding. You've got an account manager, and then usually your builder and your copywriter are there. We get a feel for your voice, tone, whatever it is along those lines. Then about two to three weeks later, you're getting a Word doc that goes through, these are all the emails we want to send in these stages over this time. We give you the opportunity to review it. Once you sign off, it gets built. Thank you so much for dropping that link, Regina. Um, I would say about three to four weeks. If it's if it's more of a standard build, it's two to three weeks. If it's more customized or we're putting case management into it or there's other things, it's probably more that four-week turnaround or five-week turnaround. 
um, and then it runs. And so we get it back to you with a um, video walkthrough of it. We want you to run with it for like three weeks. Then we're going to do full final offboarding and training. But like, I want you to be in the system because you'll see some, like the example I use all the time is we refer to something as a consultation, but the intake team at this firm said the clients prefer strategy session. So we went in and we tweaked all the emails to change the wording, but that was what the client preferred. So easy change to make. And Great. then it runs. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. Happy to help. I, uh, even if it's not with us, I truly think that having a really good CRM is the next step for most firms that truly care about growing because you can target the intake stuff, because you can do all of your consistent onboarding emails, because you can get the same signatures over and over again, because you can request the same files be uploaded from your clients. And then as the case finishes, you can do the same thing on closing the case where you can ask for the reviews, you can do the check-ins, you can do the follow-ups. And by automating all as much of that as you can, you're giving yourself more time to be personal with every client. You're giving yourself more time to train a staff member to take things off your plate. You're giving yourself more time to network with more people, to be a great lawyer, to, I don't know, the million other hats that we wear on the average day. Anything else? All right, so I'm gonna drop my email in the chat as well. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. Um, like I said, I don't do legal work, so I'm there are there are no marketing emergencies, which is much different than a lawyer where everything's an emergency or most of it. So if you've got a question, shoot me an email. Um, if you want any follow up, shoot me an email. Happy to chat with all of you. I truly think that the more the more you line this up, whether it's yourself, whether it's us, whether it's somebody else, whether it's Lawmatics or a similar program the easier it will be for you to be successful, the easier it will be for you to be happy. And really that's what I think all of us should be striving for is happiness. Yep. Um, so when I post the um, video to YouTube, I'll put the information in the chat also, but I definitely think that me upgrading to a better CRM has, has made my life so much easier um, because I don't have a dedicated intake person anymore because I don't need it because the CRM, um, funnels down and I can very easily weed out what I consider to be the low quality calls and just funnel the quality ones to my team so they're not overwhelmed because they're not calling 30 people back they're calling you know 10 and I've got three staff members so you know three calls per day per staff member isn't really overwhelming um, and then using the emails and the you know the canned text messages to quickly respond to people after they talk is also amazing. So, you know, they'll call, they'll have a 15 minute conversation um, and they'll send the notes to me if it's someone I'm interested in, then they can take literally one second, hit a canned email, canned response, start a new workflow um, that goes directly to the client just to kind of keep them engaged or they can send them the fee agreement. So since I started using a CRM, I've done way fewer consultations because I people aren't requiring to talk to me before hiring me, just ideal because I don't like talking to people. <laughs> um, so ideally people will hire me without having to have a consultation because they've been pre-screened by my team. And I think the constant communication and contact that they're getting from the CRM, the text and the emails helps them feel comfortable because otherwise it's just kind of a weird prospect of hiring a divorce attorney that you haven't spoken to, but people do it all the time. And I think the more they feel connected with your, your, team and your firm in general and how you do things, it's a lot easier to, to do that. And also, I mean, to echo what Regina said before, um, even utilizing this to be great about turning people down becomes huge. You know, I know uh, this, the Florida Bar has a recommendation for uh, contingency fee attorneys in terms of a turn down letter and some of the language to include in that. So automating that, you know, for the cases you're not taking, especially anybody who goes to high volume is super helpful. Um, what Regina talked about, you know, is sending people the additional resources for legal aid or attorneys in other areas or, you know, whatever it's going to look like can be humongous. And when you can do it without taking any extra time, right. you can make it look that much nicer to everybody instead of having like a whole staff member just going around apologizing to people for saying no. And it's crazy how long that takes because, I mean, we're in a Google reviews error, so I can't do what I was doing before because we would get crap calls all the time and you really could just hang up on people like I have 12 DUIs and I don't understand why I don't have custody of my kids like, 
can't do that anymore because they're gonna leave a bad Google review. So you can't do that. You really have to, you can't just hang up on people. You have to engage them in some way um, without, or sometimes people call and their case is just garbage and you can't really tell them that. Um, so the easiest way is to send them a very nice long canned message that says, I'm so sorry, we are unable to dedicate the resources that your very important case needs at this time. Here are some resources, here are some links, here are some referrals. And, you know, doing that with a canned email takes so much less time than the diplomacy that it would require me to muster up <laughs> of doing that personally, which is, that's hard to do. So, I mean, it sounds a little bit crazy, but yeah, the, the just having the system in place to turn down people makes your life easier. Yeah, or even um, along those lines also to, to rescind contracts. So like if you send out a contract and it's good for two weeks or 30 days or whatever it is to pull it back so that people can't hire you later. If you, you know, especially the solos, you know, if you've got that busy month and you need that person to wait a little bit longer, you may not want to have like five people from previous months hire you at the exact same time. So this gives you some opportunity to automate that process as well. All right, well, you all have my email. Seriously, super happy to help however I can. It is a wonderful tool as you start transitioning into a CRM and having a little bit more technology at your resources. And then the funny part is when you put this in place and you have it really dialed in for your firm, literally every time you talk to any other business and have to engage them, you're gonna be so much more picky with them. Like if you don't have e-signature, I'm not hiring you. If you make me fill out the same form with doctors, if I fill up all my insurance info over the phone and I come into the office and have to redo it, I'm going to be so mad because like if my little firm can put it together, your like multi-million dollar hospital plan can certainly set you up with a similar program. So that's my, that's my soapbox. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Jordan. Um, so I'll stop the recording now.